Get five coffins ready. Hey everyone, welcome to my guide for Kleena. Kleena is one of the most unique assassins in Smite, having the ability to use her ultimate two times. Oh, and she can enter walls like a Scooby-Doo villain. Jokes aside, Kleena has been a complete powerhouse since release, seeing great success in both jungle and solo lane. Build-wise, Cleo is all about ability damage, so you'll want to maximize your power and pen. Of course, going a bit of defense or going full-on bruiser is totally fine, but you definitely need at least some power and penetration in order to feel useful. Relics-wise, the good old Blink Beads works well, but Blink isn't 100% necessary, so if you like a bit more safety, Beads Aegis will work fine. When you're a soul laner, the story is largely the same. She's not really a god who can afford super defensive relics. So Cleo is a crazy unique character and one to be feared, but that doesn't mean she's hard to play. Let's get the complicated stuff out of the way first. Kleena is able to enter walls if she is above 25% HP, is not crippled, and of course if the passive is not on cooldown. Displayed very clearly here on the passive meter. You enter walls by... walking into them. Yeah, kinda hard to describe it in a more nuanced way. While inside the wall, Cleo begins taking 0.5% of her maximum health every 0.4 seconds, this damage stacking up to 40 times. Basically, the longer you stay in the wall, the more damage you begin taking. That said, Cleo is completely damaged and CC immune while in the wall, barring the damage she does to herself, of course. If Cleo is about to be killed while in the wall, she'll be spat out of it. Once Cleo leaves the wall, no matter how she left it, she'll gain 15% physical ability lifesteal. Cleo also can't use relics while in the wall, which is a bummer for me, just imagine blinking out of walls and shit. Also, god abilities that reveal around them, such as Heimdall 1, as well as wards, will not be able to see Cleo while she's in a wall, which, uh, is a problem if you're against her. Like, a really big one, making it extremely hard to chase down a Cleo after she's gone into a large wall. Quite the versatile ability, but it's really not something you need to overthink. Enter walls to gank, enter walls to escape. It's the core of Cleo's very being, and it's something you want to get used to while making plays. Obviously, don't just use it to move around the map. The damage, but especially the long cooldown, makes that a no-go. But in every PvP situation, you want to use this if you can, especially since most of her abilities gain both effects while on the wall, sometimes completely changing how they function. Such as Cleo's first ability. Cleo damages all enemies in a small cone in front of her. This cone ticking twice for a low damage, then finishes with the third high damaging tick. Enemies hit by the first two ticks are also deafened. Here's an example of what that's like. It's not really an effective debuff like a raw blind, but um, yeah, it, it exists. Any enemies hit by the final third tick are silenced, and Cleo is knocked up immune for the entire duration. Not a lot to this ability, it's a high damaging cone that hits everything and caps it off with a silence, it's great. The silence isn't really something you play around since like, who's gonna start channeling ability when you've already got this in their face? That said, you do want to keep the knockup immunity in mind. Using this to immune something like a Cerberus Soul is sure to ruffle some feathers. While on a wall, this ability strikes in a very wide but also very short cone. Yeah, you don't want to use this other than in very specific situations and it's not great. If you snag someone with it, sure, fine, but they can just not be near the wall anymore to avoid it, you can't chase them with it like you can when outside of the wall either. That said, it's not quite as disappointing as Cleo's second ability while on the wall, since it's actually her only ability that can't be used while on the wall. Normally, however, Cleo's second ability is a simple projectile that stops on the first enemy or wall hit, exploding in a small AoE. This ability also denies enemy gods hit, vision of Kleena, and only Kleena for 4 seconds. However, if she deals damage, she is shown for a brief moment while the damage connects. If an enemy god is debuffed by this ability, she gains a flat 25% move speed. So this is the definition of an ability with a lot of moving parts that you don't really need to concern yourself with. It gives you high move speed and damages them, it makes it harder for them to fight you with the visibility thing. It's great. It's good in a chase or to straight up trade, but when you're first initiating ganks, you want to save this as a combo ender or as chase if they use their movement abilities immediately. Also, you want to try and avoid using your first ability while they're debuffed by the blind, as it will reveal you for the entire time. Obviously, if you gotta use it, use it, but keep away from it till the blind ends if you can. The same cannot be said for Kleena's third ability. Kleena dashes forward, striking in a cone AoE in front of her when the dash ends. This dash can be cancelled early by reactivating this ability or by cancelling the ability. This of course making the cone AoE strike come out immediately. If performed in a wall, this ability gains much, much more range, and is her quintessential combo starter in and out of walls when blink isn't an option. That said, even when you're in people's face, this ability is still an excellent part of your combo, being able to team basic attack cancelling with the early cancellation of this ability. And of course you want to use this ability to chase and escape when needed, as you do with a normal movement ability. Even better though is chasing someone who's left over a wall, entering said wall yourself, and using the extra range for a swift catch-up. By this point, Kleena usually uses her ultimate. Kleena summons a portal directly in front of her. This portal lets loose a high initial damage and follows it with a medium damage over time, this damage diminishing with subsequent hits. In this very long but also not very wide area, enemies hit being slowed by each tick of damage, up to 6 times. 
The portal is a deployable that can be destroyed by three basic attacks by enemy gods, but given the range this shouldn't come up much. Just make sure to use it at its maximum extent to avoid this. Before we get any further, let's touch on actually casting the ability. It has a bit of Heratu syndrome, with a very long windup but only counting the very last camera movement towards the placement of the portal. So don't worry if you misplace a portal while comboing when first starting with her, it takes a little time to get used to. That said though, what this ability is notorious for, since it has two charges and a low base cooldown of 60 seconds, is simply letting loose a portal on a minion wave and watching it disappear, being able to obliterate waves much sooner than any other god in the game. This of course matters most of all in the solo lane, but hard pushing a wave with this after a successful gank before backing isn't so bad either. Then we get into how this ability works while on the wall. Kleena can place up to five of these portals in walls all around the map, and any enemies who come near this portal trigger it like a landmine and a standard cleanup portal explosion ensues, this procking off of lane minions, gods, or even jungle camps if you're not careful. This ability has plenty of uses while well on the wall, especially proxying minion waves in the soul lane as well as setting up ganks, but of course you have to be careful about setting these quote unquote landmines up in walls that are too far away from waves or even just being a bit too ambitious trying to set up traps for people who are just going to see the portal and uh, walk away. What I'd recommend to learn when and where to place these portals is to use it mostly for raw damage during a fight and occasionally use the landmine trick only in the soul lane or late game round objectives like Fire Giant and Gold Fury. Then once you have a better understanding of how close enemies have to be to trigger it and how sensitive it is to minions and jungle camps, you can try using it earlier and earlier in the match. Let's get into a few combos with Kleena. As for ability leveling, you want to get your 1 at level 1, your 3 at level 2, and your 2 at level 3. From there, you want to max your first ability, third ability, then second ability, leveling your ultimate whenever you can. Kleena is quickly becoming one of the most nerfed gods of all time given her release date. Even as I write this, there's another two nerfs coming to her next week, and I'm sure there'll be more after that, so I can't say with certainty that she'll stay this way forever. But in the meantime, Kleena is an absolute monster with her oppressive damage output, and although her CC isn't anything too impressive, the silence on her first ability along with the insane chase potential are more than enough to make her a strong assassin. My number one tip with Kleena is just don't overthink her. Her wall mechanics are certainly unique, but it's nothing that makes her unplayable to a new player. Her wall mechanics have very set rules to them, and there's really no need to try and dissect mathematically how long you'll need to be in a wall or when to place an ult portal on a wall, it's just not that complicated. If you have blink, use that to engage on a gank and use the wall only as needed to chase. And if you don't have blink, start in the wall with your third ability and use your second ability in ultimate to chase. She's very simple, she just utilizes a mechanic that nobody else in the game does. That's all I have to say for Kleena now though. Thanks for watching.